Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here in Germany, tasting rare and exotic whiskeys. The Octave, I did not know, Duncan Taylor trademarked the name The Octave, there's a little TM over here, over 15 years ago, very, very interesting. This time they used Ben Nevis uh, from 2012, bottled 2023. So we have a whiskey base number that is going to be 234910. This is a German exclusive for Kirsch Import. So 54.7% uh, ABV, 86 bottles. <laughs> is that rare and, ex and exotic for you or what? So cost 79 euros and 90 cents. All right, so I bought this bottle because I like Octave cask finishes. I'm going to read a little, little bit about that in a second. I learned a little bit about that today, but I did um, a couple, what about a year, a year and a half ago, I did a um, Octave blind tasting with six different products. Most people thought they were over-oaked. Um, they were not really to their preference. Um, let's read a little bit and let's learn a little bit. At least that's what I did, all right? So, Duncan Taylor, as I mentioned, trademarked the name uh, The Octave more than 15 years ago. I'm reading basically from an article from Whiskey Magazine. Um, but its experimentation with these casks extends back to the 1970s when the chairman of Duncan Taylor, Ewan Shand, sorry if I mispronounce your name, E-U-A-N-S-H-A-N-D, Ewan Shand, um, was an apprentice cooper. He recalls, when I first left school, I joined my father at the Glendronach Dis Distillery Company, oh, which he, his father, managed. I became a trainee cooper, and one of the disciplines was to make small casts to learn our trade, which I think is fabulous. All right, so if you can make a small cast, you can make a large cast. Very, very nice. And Chan's involvement with these casts didn't end with their creation. He went a step further, filling his casks with whiskey. He noticed that the smaller cask created a remarkable rapid change to the spirit. I knew I was onto something that nobody else had ever considered back then, Ewan recalls. That's fascinating, isn't it? In 1970, no one was using octaves, at least according to his experience there at the Glendronach Distillery. 87 bottles times 0 0.7 lit, um, liters for the bottle. We have about 61 liters. If you, an octave should be about an eighth of a sherry butt. Sherry butt is 500. 500 divided by eight is 61.5. So we're about right. I personally own uh, four octaves at the moment. They're in Scotland. Um, they're parked there. They're resting nice little spirit for a little while. Um, and so they're all between 60 and 65 as well. You often read that an octave is between 40 and 50. Eh, more around 60 to 65. That's all right. All right. So um, the rapid change, I'm reading again from Whiskey Magazine, um, or accelerated maturation, is primarily driven by an increase in the ratio of oak contact area to volume of spirit. The smaller the cast, the more contact the liquid has with the Wood. Octaves casts have significantly higher ratio compared to butts, 500 liters, hogsheads, 250 liters, even barrels, about 200 liters, meaning that maturation in terms of surface dependent biochemical reactions is ramped up in these mini cauldrons of oak and whiskey. And because of this, octaves are rarely used for long-term maturation, with Shand ex explaining he fills them for three, six, or nine months for the finishing. Now, this is a three-month finish, which I think, if I understood the system correctly, I was told that when that's three months, it's usually a first fill, and when it's six or nine, it's a second fill. They use the octaves two, maybe three times. All right, unfortunately, there's no information here about it. Just says months in octave three. Does not say first fill, it does not say second fill. Um, an octave cask is always a season cask. No one in Spain is using the sherry for octaves, or sherry, octaves for sherry, all right? So these are all manufactured for the whiskey industry. 
All right, as such, arguably the most important aspect to consider is the plethora of volatile compounds which are swiftly extracted from the wood in the initial stage of maturation. That's why we can do three, six, nine months. There's a big, big finish. All right, so I thought that was very interesting. I learned something here. I did not know that. Um, given all of the above, I did not read. The management of octaves is much more involved compared to larger casks. There's definitely a little more hand holding needed to keep on top of the progression of flavor and the higher rate of evaporation, says Greg Orquat. Operating manager, manager um, Glenn Moore Spirits, the, that progression of flavor is most markably seen in the first fill, which is why Orquat prefers octaves on their second fill. I find the first fills can be very aggressive It is if it isn't monitored closely, he explains. Shad agrees, but after more than 40 years of working with octaves, he says that for him, their use is never a stab in the dark. His team has a huge database of information on maturation, evaporation, and flavor profiles. And there actually is a flavor, flavor profile here, but I'll get to that in a second. What am I going to compare it to? Now, I have a second Ben Nevis here from a second independent bottling company, and it's 10 years as well. So what I have here is A.D. Rattree. Now, uh, forgive me, I have a little bit left in my glass from my German tasting. Um, A.D. Rattree is an independent bo um, bottler that I really like. I think they're doing great, great things. And what we have here, they give good information on the labels as well. It says matured in bourbon hogshead number 1936 for over seven years. And then in a, and this is where it gets a little murky for me. Uh, they have a cask, Isla Sherry Edition Barrique for over three years. So we have 58.2%, we have 10 years, we have cast strength. Here we have our um, 54.7. Okay, cask Isla, I understand. Cask Isla Sherry, I understand. Cask Isla Sherry Edition Barrique. How many Sherry Barriques have you heard of that's been used with Isla whiskeys? Now, what they did is, I call it secondhand smoke, or smack secondhand peat, is that a um, cask which held, let's say it's Coila, it could have been Lafroy, it could have been Kilhoman, it could have been anything from Isla. Um, it, it held the spirit in there, matured it, and a lot of the peatiness, those phenol, actually stay in the active char of the cask. And when you dump it out, it's still a lot of smokiness in there. You put in the next spirit and it washes out a little bit of that. And it's really amazing how a not peated whiskey can be very, very peated. We actually had this um, compared, compared it to the um, Artmore from 80 Rattree. This had more smoke in it than 80 Rattree did. Now, um, Ben Nevis does produce about 2 million liters of spirit a year. Used to be that a lot of it went over to Japan. Ben Nevis is owned by Nika. Um, I don't know if that's still the case, but I do know that um, if you had Nika from the barrel, if you had Nika Black, um, all those things had a lot of Ben Nevis in them. So the new Japanese regulations for whiskey, that should be changing here soon. Another fun fact, Ben Nevis was founded 1825, which means next year they will be celebrating their 200th anniversary. Hmm. Let's see what happens there. All right, on the nose. I like, I like a lot. Now the question is, could I actually get the Ben Nevis? Would I be identify, be able to identify Ben Nevis on top of all that sherry? Probably not. For me, it smells a little bit like a Muscatel sherry. It doesn't say what type of sherry. It could be Fino, it could be Amatiado, it could be Palo Cotaro, it could be Oloroso, it could be Pedro Jimenez, it could be Muscatel. Um, did I forget one? I don't know. Um, Mazzanilla. Yeah, I did forget one. Um, there should be seven. It could be any of those different types of sherries. No mention. All right, so what type of sherry? Oh, talking about no mention. Dear people from Douglas Lang, dear people that make the octaves, you have on this, even Kirsch that printed these labels, or let the labels be printed extra for Kirsch, you have www.octaves.com. 
Facebook.com, really, really big on the back of the label. You've had it now here for at least three years. There's no website. You're still printing labels with a non-existent domain, and there's no website. Ah, come on. You're taking up all this property on the label, and yet you're not using it. Either drop it from the label or do something. At least have a forward it on over to Douglas Lang. I mean, come on. Um, Douglas Lang. I don't, don't forward to Douglas Lang. Forward over to uh, Duncan Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Douglas Lang would like to have that as well. That's a different independent baller if you um, don't know. Duncan, DuncanTaylors.com is a good website to visit. All right, on the nose, I have some nice little um, flavor profiles. It says here, I should be getting herbal, citrus, green tea, fresh apple juice. Now, I didn't get the fresh apple juice until I actually smelled this again. It's like, yeah, it's right. It's not the cheap apple juice. It's fresh, uh, cloudy apple juice. Almost like we in America used to have a cider. Cider in, um, in Europe is totally different. So cloudy, fresh apple apple juice. Mm, I used to love that from my grandma. All right. Cheers. Mm -hmm. That's a good whiskey. I'm not sure if it's a good whiskey because of Ben Nevis. I'm not a big fan of Ben Nevis normally. Or is it because that was a very, very nice octave cast that was used here. All right, I put a little bit of water in it. Um, butterscotch, caramel, green apple, a little bit of fruit, but a lot of the caramel and butterscotch. It's amazing, nice. Mm. With water, I get the Ben Nevis character a little bit more. Mm, nice. Um, C plus, C plus plus even. I like this. Value for money. It's a ten year old Ben Nevis for eighty euros in cast strength. C minus. So A, why haven't you bought it? Buy B, buy it. C, you can buy it if you want to. D, you don't need to buy it. F, why was the stuff even made? This is a you can buy it if you want to. It's as I said. There's eighty six bottles. I have number two here. Um, Yep, good, good, good stuff. All right. So, um, Duncan Taylor has used their octaves for Japanese whiskey, for single grain whiskey, for rum, um, gin. It's amazing what they've used those casks for. So, they have a lot, a lot, of, a lot of experience. And apparently, they have cooperage that actually can make it for them. This with the Isla, the sherry. We did a tasting with five different 80 Rattry releases that I got my hands on over here. This was not the winner, amazingly. There, this had, as I said, more peat smoke than the Isla, the Artmore did it itself. If I were a peat head, I think I would like this more. But there's a lot of smoke. This has a lot of butterscotch cherry butterscotch caramel moment all right so i should have um on the taste gentle sherry butterscotch soft spice candied zest and chocolate nuts now i can get that i like c plus question of the day what is your favorite ben nevis write it down Thank you very much for watching, liking, and sharing, and maybe telling others here about Whiskey Jason over in Germany. Whiskies you might not ever see. So sorry. But I give you a lot of good information. See you soon. Bye-bye.